All right, Wolf Wolf. After many, many failed attempts at trying to get this thing going, uh, I think I'm finally at the degree that maybe I can can maybe do something. And uh, Choice of Robots. We are playing Choice of Robots again. If you don't know what this is, uh, there are other videos that will catch you up quite quite nicely. Uh, I can just tell you now, you build a robot, you do things with that robot, depending on how you feel about that robot. Stat-wise, uh, we're 25 years old, it's 2020, five years from now, humanity, we're kinda human, we're male, we don't know who, we don't know, we're, no one knows who we are, we have some money, and uh, our robot is gone. Well, not yet, but soon. And these are the people that like us. These are the chapters we've had. This gives you a quick idea of what the hell's going on. You can pause and read it if you want. Uh, we're going to continue on. We're on chapter 3. The media has just reported our robot and shit's about to go down. Uh, and uh, I cannot wait. So uh, let's get it on. And by that, I mean I'm going to read. Alright, you spend the next two weeks searching news feeds for your name and wonder every day when Mark's article is going to come out. I don't know why I I would since I've been kind of trying to avoid it, but um, maybe it's just because I know he's gonna do it because I'm that paranoid. I worked in the military. You gotta be that paranoid. You're awoken on Friday, March thirteenth, two thousand twenty, by a klaxon. A script you wrote on your laptop has detected Mark's article on the internet. Technology, eh? You barely sit up in your bed and stop your laptop's alarm. It's about 5 in the morning. Pickle crawls into your bedroom to see what's the matter, but you assure it that everything is fine, so it goes back to watching old sitcoms in your living room. Oh, that's right, we taught our robot to be like a Mimi, didn't we? Or like a, just a wisecracking... Ugh. That's, good. that's not going to get irritating in the future. <laughs> With my robot stabbing a guy and quoting Monty Python. No, that ain't gonna get weird. Alright, the article is just a few paragraphs very deep within the technologic, ton, technologic, technology section of the San Francisco Chronicles website. So it's not a big article. I remember the last article, it was front page. And it was, uh, it's pretty damning. But this one's just, you know, not that big a deal. DARPA funds robot baby is the headline. Well, it's more than that, but yes. The article portrays you as a mad scientist bent on making autonomous robot. That is totally not true. That may one day shed human blood. Mark tells the story of how you and Professor Ziegler worked together to create Pickle as a robot soldier for the military. That's also not true. The article goes to more length describing Professor Ziegler than you. As Mark appears to assume that you have largely acted under Professor Ziegler's direction. Well, this guy has completely just made shit up, but I didn't talk with him, so it makes sense. Robots that can intelli intelligently support our soldiers in the field are critical to our nation's security, Professor Ziegler says in the article. Better they, they die on the front lines than our brave war heroes. Oh yeah, he was like a, a sleazy southern guy, wasn't he? I'm not going to remember voices. That I even attempted to do them in the first place was foolhardy of me. So don't hold me to that. And if I somehow break my rule in the future and, and do more voices, you know what? You can't stop me. Well, you can, but you know, no, just don't judge me. I I am having fun. Let me have my fun. The article emphasizes Pickle's general intimidating appearance. You mean that of a deadly spider? I have no idea what you mean, sir. And ask the reader, imagine the country swarming with the robots of your design, tools of an oppressive state. Come on, man. What? Come on. Isn't that awesome? Aren't you a little bit, you know, impressed by it? With selective uh, use of quotes from your friends and acquaintances, which, by the way, I haven't had much interaction with, the article portrays you as a little vacant and suggests that perhaps you have sacrificed some of your humanity for your robots. Yeah, what's so? Our article concludes with the quote from E.G. Oh god, what did you say? Bobby is just a dreamer, he said. I'll bet one is very good at making his dreams come true. Well, that's not bad. <laughs> of all the quotes 
that I've heard in, in political aspects. That's the best one I've heard. Article wonders whether the end results of your technology will turn out to be a dream or a nightmare. Hopefully both. How do you feel about Mark's portrayal of you? Confused? How did he ever get that impression? Well, I am making a war robot. Angry? One day he will regret right I'm not really angry by this article. In fact, I don't think the article even took it seriously. The last character I played, it was front page and it was basically insinuating that I was the destroyer of humanity. And it was... And, and that was me talking to the man. So he completely betrayed me. So I was angry with that one. Because he was like, you... No, no, I'm not good at... And then he... Ugh. So yeah, but this one is just ridiculous. So I think it's funny. It's like, I'm infamous. <laughs> Who wants to be famous when you can be infamous? You're more than a little tickle to be in the center of attention like this. It's like shaking the ants in the ant farm and watching them writhe in confusion. <laughs> Not exactly the way I took it, but okay, I, I can I can go down with that. What is this, they wonder. Unused unused to the presence of someone so far beyond their kin. My god, dude, a little a little egotistical. <laughs> What will you do now? Show Pickle the article? I think that gives him sentience. Or, what's it called? Autonomy? Don't think I want him to be autonomous. Call Mark and try to him to change the article? But I, after I think it's funny? Why would I do that? Comment directly on our dis disputing its claims. Sure. That sounds stupid, but you know what? The, the whole thing's stupid. So, yeah. Let's start a, let's start a flame war. You write a long comment on the article explaining the ways in which it uh, selectively presented facts to make you sound more sinister. Unfortunately, by the time your comment is done, it is nowhere near the top of the comments, as many others with shorter remarks have posted before you. You wonder if even Mark will read your comments. But at least one user of the site, Robot Obsession 1987, thanks you for the clarification. Even as many other users pot on you <laughs> with poorly spelled and badly thought out responses that make your brain bleed. You briefly checked the internet for more posts about the article. Remarkably, nobody has blogged about the story. Good! That's good, though. I don't want people ha ha hounding me about this. Like, the last article we did, everyone was on my dick. And I almost got killed for it. Like, uh, someone, like, said, No, I need to kill you now because you are the doom of humanity and now I gotta kill you. And they, like, placed bombs at my house. I, like, lost two houses. It was ridiculous. Uh, you're getting a phone call. According to the caller ID, it's mom. As your finger hesitates over the answer button, a second call appears on the screen. A number in Glendale, California. That's the... What's her name? I think that's... Uh, cause, no, no, she wasn't from Glendale, was she? Alright, so answer the call from Glendale, take the call from Mom. Any minute now, these calls are going to be intercepted by my script that pretends I'm answering the phone. That, like, what? to what ends does that do? I think these just add uh, secondary stories. Because uh, last time I did the mother one, because what can I say, I'm a family guy. And um, he just tell, she just tells you about your dad. Who is who? You know he's sick, but he's he's arrogant like you, so he never doesn't admit nothing, and that that gives you the option to I think know about the family disease. Uh, I haven't done the Glendale one, and who knows what the last one does? It sounds very inter interpersonal. Uh, hmm. Well, I mean, for the sake of variety, I think I'm gonna answer the call from Glendale, even though I'm probably not interested in what who who's calling me. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll do that. Now, um, don't think of this as an anti-family thing. It's just I know what that story leads to. So, and I'm being ultra America soldier building death destroyer that eventually, in the end, will probably betray everyone and rule the world. So. Family's kind of like the last thing on my mind. Alright, who we got? You decide mom can wait. The mysterious call is probably more important. Yeah, I could always call her back. Ha ha ha. 
if the game lets me. But it turns out to be a robocall for a poli political candidate named Joaquinlan Irons. Is that her name? Or Jacqueline? It's Jacqueline. Wow. I, I, I went a different direction with that name. Jacqueline Irons. What a name. That's pretty good. It's not even good speech synthesis. They're using some crappy tape-based system from the 80s. You hang up and try to get bombed, but when your call goes straight to voicemail, you realize she's probably run out of phone battery. Uh, I, I can <laughs> I can sympathize with them with that one. Your next call, phone call is from Josh. He must be using a new vid video phone. I just realized that, that was a complete waste of time. Wow. Interesting. Anyway, your next phone call is from Josh. He must be using his new vid phone. Video phone. Not vid phone yet. Because his image is crisp and popping with color. Well, insofar as a dark warehouse and his gray hood, he can pop with color. Hey, Bobby, Josh says. I just saw the article. Seems really unfair. I know you're not crazy, monster. <laughs> Thanks. I want to cheer you up. Want to go to a concert tomorrow night? There's a really good Led Zeppelin cover. Oh, cover band playing. I thought he was taking me to Led Zeppelin. Dude, take me to Led Zeppelin for real. They come, they come out here. Uh, do I want to go to a cover band of Led Zeppelin? I mean, I haven't gotten this option before, so that, that already tells you that we're on a new path. Hmm. I mean, it's a cover band. It's not Led Zeppelin. If it was Led Zeppelin, then I'd be like, hell yeah. But it's a cover band. Uh, I mean, I like Josh, and he will probably be with me through most of my endeavors. Because he's my he's my go-to money man, corporate leech. But at the same time, no. Because uh, who knows? Uh, maybe the military will come in and poke my butt. All right, no problem. Josh says he hangs up. You realize that you haven't checked your ma email at all today. Checking in for the first time, one email in particular catches your attention. Oh shit! Wait, isn't that the? Isn't that the person who said she was fine with it? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Sorry, I, I know who this is. Checking for the first time when email catches your attention. Because of the author's unusual email address. Now, we, di we did see this name. To gain the world. Out of curiosity, you open the email. Dear Bobby, it's not too late to turn back, but this is your first and only warning. If you insist on creating machines of death, and I'll be forced to stop you. Please dismantle your robot. If I must sacrifice my life to prevent you from destroying the world, I will do it. But I urge you to give it up peacefully. What profit is it to a man if he gains the world but loses his own sh soul? Matthew, blah, blah, blah. I believe. She doesn't even know. Sincerely, Tammy. <laughs> a death threat. Well, that's new. You can do a little sleuthing online to see if you can find out more. Tammy was not very savvy about covering her tracks online. You find an old public Facebook profile that reveals her name to be Cooper. She lives in a somewhat poor zip code in San Jose. Damn, that's actually quite close. She has she has no more than a handful of Facebook friends. The woman in the old Facebook photo, photo has frizzy blonde hair and is one of the most frighteningly thin people whose skin is stretched top over a too visible skeleton. What will you do? Now, last time I just uh, I think I informed the police and then I just let I just forgot about her. She will kill you. <laughs> She does her best, because you're not stopping. Now I do wonder if I can meet her in real life. Oh, oh, so many options. <laughs> I don't know how, like, this, this is getting very picky now. Like, how do I want to play this? If I go for murder, they're gonna, they're gonna know it's me. I mean, unless I had the robot do it, and then they're gonna be like, who could possibly do this other than someone who knows robots? <sighs> I know for a fact my robot's not harmless because it's not going to be. Uh, I offered to meet Tammy over coffee without pickle to show I'm not a bad person. She will kill me. This this lady isn't kidding. Uh, I offered to show pickle to Tammy to prove my robot is harmless, and then I kill her. No, this is what I did last time. It didn't prevent shit. She blew up my house. Um, I kind of want to just kill her. I kind of really just want to kill her, because throughout the whole game she comes, becomes a pain in the ass, like for real. 
she just blows up. she blows up your house she blows up the factory you're in like the, the one that you personally built she just is a personal and and by that time everybody has robots so she's just being a bitch at that point she's just like you did this i'm gonna take my anger out on you it's uh, and then later when you're like supreme master and you got control of your robots and you're like literally taking over like cities and shit with your robots she's still doing crap she's still doing things trying to hit get get you to flinch she's just a pain in the dick i thought we were good because i thought she said oh thank you for clarifying <sighs> i know this is all like hindsight i.e i know what she's capable of so that's why i'm not just going with oh well let's just pick one of these obvious options but this option is just so good. Looks like it's kill or be killed. Tonight we seek and destroy. Like this would be the perfect opportunity to teach my robot combat, right? But then I I have to assume like legal problems will happen. <sighs> but it's so good. Cause I hate her so much. And yes, it's from a previous playthrough, but I mean, this is the military robot playthrough, basically. So, it's stupid not to just do this, as far as I'm concerned. Because everything else doesn't make sense. Everything else is, I'm trying, I'm not trying to build a death robot. I am. <laughs> that is the goal. The goal is to make a horrible death robot that eventually will probably take over the world. And I don't care if I don't have control over it or not. So, uh, yeah, let, let's see if we can do this. Because maybe the game's like, oh, yeah, you have that option, but she'll get away and blow up your house. All right, let's, let, let's do it. <laughs> Pickle. Pickle crawls into your room. Yes, master. Tonight, you will face your greatest test so far. Are you ready? Yes, master. Oh, my God, this is great. You try out a nap my nap. <laughs> you try out a maniacal laugh, but you can't get it to sound quite right. Pickle understands what you're trying to do though and, and builds out a great one. <laughs> well done, Pickle. Well done. <laughs> Already I do not regret anything. Oh, so far everything's going according to plan. All right, let's do it. You check out the time on your phone. You should probably get something to eat before your meeting with Professor Ziegler. Also, murder. Pickle, I have to go meet Professor Ziegler. Stay here. Pickle's watching Love, actually, as you pass through the living room. Don't actually know what that is. Hopefully, it's good. Be on the lookout for Love, Master. Pickle calls after you. It can happen when you least expect it. Pickle, you are the best death machine I've ever created. Thank you. I'm sure if you chose a more serious option, he would be a lot more serious. But that I made him a goofy idiot is just making this oh so great. Alright, you make your way across the campus to the computer science building. A newly constructed tower of glass amidst the stucco and shingle mission architecture of the rest of the school. Professor Ziegler's office smells like cigar smoke and is decorated with posters advertising robot conferences with acronyms for names. In years, in years before you were born, A A A I eighty nine, A I J C A I ninety two, I R O S ninety four. These are probably real things too. Professor Ziegler himself is sitting back in a swivel chair at an angle that makes the fluorescent lights reflect off his aviator glasses. The man has aviator glasses, for God's sake. So you can't read his expression. There are two simple wooden chairs in front of his desk, and one is occupied by Juliet Robert Rogers, the woman you you demoed for. Yeah, I was like demoed, demoed. She's not wearing a uniform. She considers you with polite interest. There was no period there, or comma. There was something needed to be there. Professor Ziegler bids you sit with a wave of his hand, and you do. Bobby, I believe you've met Juliet Rogers. Juliet formally shakes your hand. You're surprised at her firm grip. A pleasure to see you again. Sure. 
I saw the article. I'm sorry you had to be caught up in that. I thought if I didn't grant him the interview, he wouldn't write it, you say in frustration. At any rate, Professor Ziegler continues, you now have placed me in an awkward position. I did shit, man. What? I didn't do anything. What? You clearly can't continue to be my student. The press will assume I'm getting my ideas from you, and other fame-seeking graduate students will try to emulate your insubordination? He hesitates and you wonder what is coming next. Motherfucker! <laughs> it's our relationship. Yeah, he went down. That wasn't my fault. Oh, thank God. I thought he was going to kick me out again. Son of a bitch. So I've decided it's time for you to graduate, Professor Ziegler says. Staple a few of your academic papers together and call it a thesis. Thank you, sir. You manage. <laughs> Only appropriate response for your advisor telling you that he's going to let you leave with a PhD. You figure you can decide later whether or not to follow the suggestion, but the form your thesis will take. Meanwhile, I asked Captain Rogers to come here because it's a poor advisor who doesn't try to secure a job for his students after graduation. True. Experience speaks wise of this. He frowns and drums his fingers once. We're off the academic job hunt cycle, but Captain Rogers has something else in mind for you. Oh, could it be guns and death? I hope. That's what I've been geared towards. Captain Rogers nods. The service has been interested in autonomous technology for some time, and we would be honored to work out a way to collaborate. She looks to Professor Ziegler. By your leave, I would have a word in private with Bobby. This is gonna go well, I can already tell. Professor Ziegler waves you away, and you walk out of the building with Captain Rogers. The day is bright. Oh, it's the day. I thought it was nighttime. And backpack-wearing cyclists whiz past you on their way to class. Sprinklers deluge the campus. Zoyista. Well, that is a word. With too much water. And you two must walk... Uh, we're in a drought, damn it. Save the water. Unless this is... Unless the drought stopped by then. Maybe. Hopefully. And the two of you must walk around the puddles as they leave on the sidewalk. Professor Ziegler speaks highly of your technical ability, says Captain Rogers. He says your work combines genius and artistry. Really? You try not to read too much into that statement. Professor Ziegler is trying to sell your work after all. But a part of you wants to believe it. The Air Force is looking to make a significant advances in robot technology. I'm kind of a talent scout looking for new scientists and companies to form relationships with. She gives you a friendly but for professional smile. If you're planning on starting a company after you finish your desert dissertation, desertion, Ooh. I think we can offer you a contract right off the bat. Oh, well, that's an instant job offer. Would you be willing to tell me whether my technology will be used to create killer robots? Am I asking that as a concern, or am I asking that because I want to know if I'm going to build killer robots? Because that's kind of what I'm doing. If you're guaranteeing the government will be my customer, I can hardly turn down the opportunity. Will you be willing to discuss this over dinner? She doesn't want anything to do with us, dude. No thanks, I'd rather not get involved in warfare. Are you kidding? Would you be willing to tell me whether my technology will be used to create killer robots? Because that's all I care about. Juliet shrugs. I can't promise you anything. Information is highly compartmentalized in the armed services. But I can say that we need robots for all kinds of roles, not just fighting on the front lines. As for the future, well, you never really know the, what the results of science will be, do you? Okay, so that was just a general poke in the, poke in the head then. Alright, if you're guaranteeing the government will be my customer, I can hardly turn down the opportunity. Good. What will the name of your company be? Oh, goody. Oh my god. All these names are great. Except the last one. The last one isn't good. I could always make up my own, but these names are good. I like them. Except singularity, because that's not what I'm doing. Unless it's through death. If we're being singular through death, then yes. Bobby's Universal Robots isn't as good. Tesla Tech is amazing, but I think I get sued by Tesla. So we'll do Pickle Works. It's like DreamWorks with Pickle. I love it. Pickle Works. Got it. <laughs> she offers her hand. It's been a pleasure, Bobby. We'll be in touch. She gives you her card and 
anachronism in this age of digital business cards and bids you a farewell. That night you drive down the San Jose. Oh shit, we're gonna kill. We're gonna kill. We're gonna kill. That night you drive down the San Jose to the address listed on Tammy's old public Facebook. It's a teeny one story in dire need of a new paint job. Someone's loud rap music drifts to you from a far off open car window, then recedes. You park your car a block away. You ready? You ask Pickle. Yes, master. You help Pickle out of the car, then quickly get back in as Pickle stealthily crawls towards the house, its multi-tool hands clenching a gun? A gun? You couldn't have done something a little bit more stealthy, like a knife? He throws knives! You've thrown knives! That would have been the best thing to do. A gun? I bet you it's not even a silenced gun. Anyway, on reaching the front door, a lockpick and torque bars spring from... Pickle's hands, and he quickly goes to work scrubbing at the inside of the lock with the pin until it opens. Oh shit, this is gonna be tense. <laughs> you got more grace though. It's a war machine, it should be able to kill a, a nobody terrorist. You hear Tammy scream, and then crack, crack, crack. Three loud gun saws is set off a nearby car alarm. Why did you give the bot spider a gun? I will admit that's kind of more terrifying than I originally thought. <laughs> Spiders coming at me with guns, not not exactly the best. Uh, still good though. Well, Tammy's dead. Pickle hurries back to the car, covered in blood. She's dead, Master. Did I pass the test? Yes, Pickle. With flying colors. Yes, that happened. <laughs> And all the flying colors were clustered around the RGB value known as Crimson. You speed away in the night. Problem solved. Look at that military boost. I don't care he doesn't have empathy. What's your empathy? Four? Who gives a shit? <laughs> There's no empathy in war. And, and we... And we killed that... Fucking pain in the ass. Unless that wasn't her. That's probably that's probably it, right? Our, our, my shit's still gonna get blown up because Tammy wasn't the one in there, or something. Whatever. She's dead. We're good. We did our job, or he did his job. Next morning, you slip in quite late. For some reason, you still feel exhausted. It is as if you could have slept much more. You think perhaps your dreams were unrestful. You recall the Statue of Liberty awarding you a medal for killing Tammy in battle. Yes! And you're being unsure whether to tell Liberty is actually murder. <laughs> but the memory is hazy. <laughs> I'm a oh! Oh my god! We're not human anymore. Committing murder. Committing murder is a good deal. She's dead. Bye, Tammy. Oh, shit. 20%. That, all right, committing murder with a robot. You're you're not good anymore. Gotcha. Understood. That night you stay in your apartment, exhausted from the events of the past two days. Well, pickle. Uh, uh, so <laughs> everything's fine now because Tammy's dead. Because otherwise we'd be having problems. While pickle spends his time gobbling up more information from movies. You know what? You can be autonomous. That's fine. Maybe a little bit. Not too much. Just a little. All right. Wow, we just sat at home all day, didn't we? All right. You spend the next few weeks as you write your thesis for graduate school, unsupervised learning in the pickle architecture. When you finally defend your thesis, mom, dad, and pickle are all there at your final presentation. At the school's reception for fresh doctorates, mom jokes, so do I have to call you Dr. Tesla now? I forgot I named my last name Tesla. It's a bit... You know, considering... Uh, you know Tesla's current goals for Mars and all that not too far off he would do this shit I imagine maybe not murder probably not murder <laughs> you demur but it is what the stat screen calls you now Dr. Tesla am I a doctor I'm a doctor I wasn't a doctor um, my last game because uh, he kicked me out of school because he was an asshole yeah I'm a doctor Doctor! I got my doctorate. 
Bobby, I can't tell you how proud I am of you. Dad says, shaking hand. Thanks, Dad. I meant you would live over and over. Was there more you could have said? How were you to know it was the last time you would see him? Oh man, that fast? Last time he 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 didn't die for a while, but this one seems like instant. Only a week after that. Wow. All right. A week later, after your family has gone home, but you have not yet gotten to businesses of moving out of your apartment, you get a call from mom. Oddly, she chose not to use video at all. Bobby, I have some bad news for you. She says. There's a heaviness in her voice that you've never heard before that fills you with dread. You're completely unprepared for what comes next. Your father passed away last night. That is so quick. Just because I didn't talk with her? Man, that's crazy. Your father's funeral is a simple graveside affair with just a few attendees. The cast is sitting on a metal gurney next to all the hole into which it will eventually be lowered. After everyone has gone... There are no trappings of any faith since your father was not religious himself, nor did he have many close friends, but the ones you know came. You find yourself sitting in the front row next to Pickle, who was not explicitly invited, but was not explicitly prohibited either. Pickle seems overwhelmed by the sadness in the air. You have never seen it so glum. Sad spider. Your mother, wearing a black dress and veil, goes up to the stand next to the casket. It's not often that my English degree comes in handy, as Bill would have been quick to point out. She says with a wry smile. On a few occasions, I find none of my own words seem sufficient. So I'd like to begin with a favorite passage of ours. Also, the music is completely inappropriate for this. <laughs> I didn't think my dad would die this quick. I thought we'd have like another chapter. Alright. Which one was the one that did military? I accidentally did that last time. Not because all these are good. Like full fathom five, thy father lies. That's that's pretty good. To everything there is a season. This one, uh, this these are all famous quotes. And if I knew the quote or, or the actual like, you know, monologue here, I would know what each means. I think it's do not despise death, but be well content with it. This one basically means do not fear death, accept it, and use it to your advantage, which makes your military go up for some reason. So let's do that. Yeah, military. All right. Do not despise death, but be well content with it, since this too is one of the things which nature wills. For such as it is to be young and to grow old and to increase and reach maturity and to have teeth and beard and gray hairs and to beget and to be pregnant and to bring forth and all the other natural operations which the seasons of thy life bring such also is dissolution then this is consistent with the character of a reflecting man to be neither careless nor impatient nor contemptuate contempute I almost got through all that but I messed it up contempt my this word has has got me down contemptuous contemptuous holy moly with respect to death but to wait for it as one of the operations of nature mom clears her throat that was marcus Aler 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 oh, latin latin Aler Aler i can't do it i can't do latin marcus alurius 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 Latin, one of Bill's favorite philosophers. <laughs> when he found he was gradually fainting more and more, I think he knew the end was coming, but he was fearless about it. He actually alluded to that passage when I asked him about it. Mon smiles sadly. More than anyone I know, Bill was wise and accepted whatever came his way. Let's all remember then to be as brave as Bill in accepting his death. He glanced at Pickle, who seems very interested in this message of fearlessness in the face of death. Yeah! Kill people, it's cool. You sit through a few more... Well, he's already killed people. <laughs> you sit through a few of your father's friends giving recollections of him. He was brilliant, they say. But you also get the feeling he was not always there for his friends. That he was lost in his own world. They never say he was kind or that he was full of love. Indeed, he always seemed distant to you as well. After the service, you walk up to your father's casket and place your hand on it. What have you resolved to do in light of his death? 
Alright, I must work on technology that's better able to remove tumors like the dead one dead hit. I'm not going down that path, so I don't think that would help me. Right? I must not remember it only for my intellect, but for my kindness as well. That ain't gonna happen. I just killed someone. On purpose. So, we're, we're, like, what's my humanity? Still 20. Not gonna happen. I mean, I guess I could gain some humanity, but who, at this point, it's not gonna do anything. Really. I must find out more about why Dad died and whether I'm genetically at risk. That actually is very important. But I don't know if we have the skills to do that. Marcus Illyrius Illyrius. I'm never gonna say his name, but darn it, I'm gonna believe in myself. He's right. Death is not to be feared, so I must not be afraid to kill. I've already killed, technically. It wasn't, like, I could say it was Pickle that killed, but I'm the one that made him do it. So it's me. It's me that killed. So let's just go down. We've already killed someone. Holy shit. Look at that. Holy moly. We're, we're out of control. We're out of control. Holy crap. Is it even counting this stuff? <laughs> Why is it? Oh, no. We're singular. Oh, shit. We're so... We're not even transhuman anymore. We're the one. Oh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> we're, we're good. Military-wise, we're good. What is death? Only the... S s s sit. Only the... S s cessation. Is that it? Cessation of movement of some matter, you think. The sanctity of life is an illusion. A quaint custom. Oh shit. Everyone must die, as dear old dad here in his coffin shows. What's a few years, more or less? Surely to remake the world, you may need to cause bloodshed. But that, but the bold make sacrifices to forward the future. That is a hell of a assumption. Decide to not let dad's passing deter you. <laughs> I have become unhuman. I'm basically a robot at this point. I didn't think this guy would get as dark as he's gotten, but I mean, I killed a person, and now I don't care my dad's dead. So at this point, we're the future up, oh, and that's the end of the chapter. Well, we got a lot of stuff done, didn't we? You've decided that the surest way to change the world is with your own company. Well, yes, it's called Pickleworks. And indeed, Pickleworks will have far-reaching impact, starting with Josh, who texts you a short message the day you're first covered in the Wall Street Journal. Welcome to the Shark Tank! Yeah, I have no doubt I will be needing his help with uh, dealing with the, the local uh, wackos. But Tammy's dead. So that is basically assurance. Like, someone will obviously take her place to try and screw me. But not her. I mean, she had a specific name. We're good, right, Tammy? We're good. We're so good because you are dead. I have no humanity. I'm a local celebrity. Wealth-wise, we're fine. This is the most important thing right here, baby. Mm. No one will stand up or against us. We are the Illuminati. We will kill all of you. Man, we did that very quickly. <laughs> like a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff happened there. A lot of stuff. But it was quick. I feel it was kind of quick. Like, uh, I think because of the events I chose, that's why these things happen now rather than later. But it's cool that it, it does that. Because um, I played a couple of these other games and they don't exactly do that. They don't think that far ahead where they'll actually mix up uh, the situations you get in, which is cool. So uh, yeah, I, can, I, lo I love this story because there's just so much, so much you can do with this character that almost feels organic. And that's, and this is, of course I'm going cartoon character. I would never naturally do this, but I must admit it's hilarious and fun to be to play the villain, like the absolute "I hate everyone, let's all just destroy the world together" villain. 
it's like, uh, I don't know, I feel like I'm like, uh, that, like there's a villain, uh, anyway, I'm rambling. I'll, I'll know what I'll say in the future, but for now, that's the end of chapter 3, we'll go on to chapter 4, and see what the hell we do with these killer robots of death. I don't think they're gonna be service bots. Nope. I mean, we are working for the military, so, yeah. Never mind. <laughs> I know exactly what we're doing. Until then, I'll see you later, Gators. I'm so used to pushing buttons.